It has been almost a month now since the renewed conflict between Israel and Palestine started, which has its roots in a colonial crime for more than a century ago. Now thousands of people have died while others have been displaced as a result of the conflict. Now last week it was reported that 16 South Africans needed to be evacuated from the Gaza area. Good evening, my name is Tabo Mulukwane. Welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we are joined in studio by Romy Malamud, who is a South African Israeli whose adoptive Israeli family has been trapped and badly affected by the Middle East war. And she's here to talk to us about how far, rather, how the war badly affected her Israeli family there. She's joining us via Zoom. Uh, Romy, thanks very much for taking the time and joining us uh, this evening. How are you? You know what? Tough times have fallen upon us and upon my people. Unfortunately, I can't say I'm doing very well. I'd just like to make a correction. You said in the beginning that this was a colonial crime that started 100 years ago. I'd like to correct that. Um, it's not colonizing if you're indigenous to the land and Israel is indigenous to the Jewish people. I'd just like to make that clarification. Other than that, I'm doing very poorly. Um, yes. Uh, much appreciated for that. But I want us to start the conversation by, uh, you know, looking at uh, uh, just maybe this focus on you. Where are you originally from and, uh, uh, you know, where are you currently residing at this stage? Because we understand that uh, your family is trapped there in Gaza. So actually, I'm a South African Israeli, I'm a Jewish South African as well. I've been living in Israel for about four years, and my family is not trapped in Gaza. They are trapped in Israel um, because you know, we are Israeli people. We've been living there for many generations, and um, it's been a very bad situation. I used to live in a place two kilometers from the Gaza border that has been rampaged, raped, and pillaged. And I'd like to share my story with you today. Um, you know, I, I, want to, I want you to tell us about your experience. I mean, in uh, Kibbutz Kisufim in Israel, uh, we understand that, uh, you know, uh, as we said earlier on when we began the discussion that your adoptive family lives there. And, uh, you know, as a foreign national coming from South Africa, how were you received by the people of that village? Because we know that, uh, you know, it's a very rural community. Uh, you know, uh, with its own mutual social aids and all these kind of things. Uh, how did they receive you when you got to that community? So Kibbutz Kisufin is really one of the most beautiful communities I've ever been a, a, a part of. You know, I come from Cape Town where you barely talk to your neighbors. And when I came to Israel, I came alone by myself. I moved there and I was accepted into this beautiful community of Kibbutz Kisufin. Not only do you talk to your neighbors, you invite them into your home, you do everything together. All of the Jewish holidays we spend together, anything you ever need. They put food on the table for me, they put a roof over my head when I needed one. And now is the time when they need me. Mm. So um, how has been everything? Have you tried to communicate with them, uh, you know, knowing that uh, they are still trapped in Israel? Um, have you had any some sort of communications with them? Yes, fortunately I have. Um, Kibbutz Kisufin, where I'm from, as you said, it is a small rural countryside community. Um, there I was adopted by the kibbutz, but specifically by one family, um, the Gilboa family. It really took me on as if I was one of their own daughters, gave me a home. And unfortunately, now they are refugees. They were forced to leave their homes after the atrocities committed on October 7th against our people. People in my kibbutz were murdered. Entire families were burned alive in their homes. And people who were the survivors are forced to leave. They left their homes like refugees with the clothes on their back. Couldn't take their dogs, their cats, their clothes, nothing with them. They left as they were. And that is the families who survived, the families that are left whole. Many other families are left split in half while their children were murdered, their babies were butchered, or their parents were killed. Mm. I mean, uh, you know, the when you look at the news currently now, there's more talk on uh, what's happening there in Gaza and there hasn't been much of a spotlight when it comes to Israel. Um, I, I mean, as an Israeli, South African Israeli, uh, how do you perceive, uh, you know, the media report, uh, reporting structure, if I may put it that way, how they report on this whole conflict? Do you think that uh, there's some sort of biasness when it comes to reportage, particularly looking at, uh, you know, how they've been actually reporting this conflict? 
There has definitely been some bias reporting the conflict. Of course, people find this conflict very um, polarizing. For me, it's not polarizing. For me, this is my home. These are my people who are being killed and murdered and raped and forced to leave their homes. I don't think many South Africans have even heard of the Israeli refugees, about half a million now. Not just my adoptive family, not just my village. Half a million Israelis are now refugees in their own country, forced to leave their homes with nothing. It's been two weeks now since they've been evacuated from their homes and their villages have been declared war zones. They don't even know if they have something to go back to. And now they're on the other side of the country, just grateful to be alive, but essentially they're not living. Mm. Um, 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 just lastly, before we go to the ad break, I wanted to understand also, you know, in terms of um, how the conflict has affected uh, Kibbutz, Kisofim, there we know that, uh, you know, um, uh, the, 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 that very same community is embracing socialism, you know, uh, they sought religious um, innovation and, you know, it has somehow declared itself as a mixed, uh, you know, egalitarian society there. Obviously, there's some sort of way that the community is leaving. Um, how has the conflict affected the whole setup? So, as you said, Kibbutz Kisufim is based on socialist principles. It's very much all for one, one for all. And whoever can, can do what they can to bring peace to the Palestinians, to the Israelis, they do it. We're very liberal, peace-loving people, in fact. Many people from Kibbutz Kisufim would help Palestinians enter Israel, help give them jobs, help bring them children to receive life-saving treatments in Israeli hospitals like dialysis and all these kinds of treatments that we have in Israel. And they would do everything that they could for the Palestinians. Unfortunately, my community has been now left in ruins. Eight people were murdered. Children, women, entire families, Holocaust survivors dragged out of bomb shelters and, and shot in the head. Uh, the community is left shattered and... I don't know if uh, some people are willing to go back to their homes at this point, if they even have something to go back to. Romy, I want us to park it there. Let's take a quick ad break. Uh, we're coming back after this. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're still tuning in to Soweto Today with myself, Tabo Mulukwani. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. Now, before the ad break, we were speaking to Romy Malamud, who is a South African Israeli on the conflict that is happening in both countries, as someone who's experiencing it firsthand and, you know, as someone whose adoptive Israeli family has been badly affected and impacted by the war. Now, let's bring in uh, to this conversation Bafana Mudisa, who is the spokesperson for the South African Friends of Israel, and he's here to speak to us about the solidarity prayer they held on Friday, you know, a pledging support to the Jewish state of Israel. Romy Malamud is also still joining us via Zoom there. Bafana, thanks very much for taking the time and joining us. Uh, good evening. Welcome to the show. Oh, thanks. Thanks, my brother. A uh, pleasure to be here. Good evening to, to the viewers. Much appreciated. You know, I want us to start the conversation by looking at uh, the Solidarity Prayer. You know, um, what was it all about and also how was the turnout? You know, South Africans on this day came out in their numbers in unity with the people of Israel. Most leaders, Christian, civil society, traditional leaders came in support to say we need to stand together against terrorism. There has been a misunderstanding around this war. This war is not against Palestinians, it's against terrorism, which is Hamas. And even the PA, Mahmoud Abbas, the leader of the people of Palestine, has said Hamas does not speak for the people of Palestine. So we came together to pray for peace to prevail in the Holy Land, but also to pray to God, to have some divine intervention you can't have people dying in such huge numbers. Already 1,400 Israelis have died. 200 people are held hostage in Gaza. We still have a lot, in, uh, have, have a lot of people right now dying as we speak in Israel because of this conflict. Something needs to be done and we believe that as South Africans, let us unite in prayer with the, with the people of Israel, also with the people of Palestine to say, let there be peace in the Holy Land. I mean, um, you know, you are a pro-Israeli group, uh, so um, I, I want to understand what uh, do you say your position is founded on? Our position, find most, is more on the biblical route that Christianity was born, was, is the root, Israel is the root of Christianity. Secondly, South Africa has been misunderstood across the world 
as the people who hate Israel, which is not true. Our people don't hate Israel. What has happened, it is that our history has somehow found its way within this conflict, which was not there for the past 50 years before the 2000, before the Deben conference that took place in Deben, which for the first time in the world, this war was labeled as an apartheid or a struggle uh, as compared to the history of South Africa. However, the roots of this war have nothing to do with our history. So we stand against demonization, uh, delegitimization of the state of Israel. The Jewish people, like any other people, have a right to have a state in their homeland. Um, but I'm going to bring this question also to you. Um, uh, Romy, let me bring you to this conversation. I mean, what is your take on uh, South Africa's stance on the matter? I mean, we saw the ANC, uh, you know, coming out uh, previously saying that uh, they are for Palestine. And also, you know, some government officials, uh, as we know, that the ANC is the one that is uh, actually uh, the ruling party in the country. Obviously, their ministers, we saw them, all of them, you know, uh, taking a stance saying that, look, we are for Palestine. Uh, how did you receive that news? Um, we're going to try to still get Romy on uh, there. Mm -hmm. Bafana, let me bring it back to you. Sure. Um, what's your take on um, uh, the stance of the uh, government or just the ANC in general? Okay, I'm glad you said the ANC because the ANC has this hostile policy against Israel. And if you understand where it comes from, it comes from the relationship that the PLO and the ANC had in Moscow during the struggle. This has nothing to do with our history. For, 50, for the past 50 years, from 1948 to, to the early 2000s, this was known as an Arab-Israeli war. The Jews defending their right to exist around their neighbors who have attacked them more than three times. First in 1948, second in 67, third time in 78. And this had nothing to do with apartheid. But because the ANC, Russia Alliance, and the PLO comes a long way back in the struggle. However, this has nothing with our history. The ANC are in solidarity with their friends or comrades in the struggle. And we, are, we appreciate what they did for our struggle as South Africans. But however, we must never allow the history of apartheid to be used as a weapon to actually demonize the Jewish state and wage war of, uh, against the Jews in the world. Mm. Um, uh, you know, this question may be controversial, but a lot of South Africans, uh, you know, do not feel that we should be fixated on mm. matters of this conflict mm -hmm. as uh, we have our own issues in, in, in the country that, need, that needs fixing. Uh, what is your take on that? And also, the importance of our contribution as a country to peace, you know, uh, to peacemaking for the two nations, uh, Israel and Palestine. My brother, we are part of the global community. Uh, yes, we have our own internal issues. We have corruption in this country. We have a lot of things. People don't have water and all of that. But then Mandela was a man who was known to be a pacifist, someone who was committed towards resolving conflict and becoming a voice of unity and peace around, across the world. And that's why even during his presidency, the embassy of Israel and Palestine were established and he was able to work with two people. He was a friend to Asar Arafat and also a friend to Shimon Peres. So as part of the global community, we should be able to become agents of unity and change and bring about peace where there is conflict. What I disagree with, I disagree with our government and our leaders imposing their ideological position and make it look like South Africans hate Israel. We travel to Israel every single year. Churches here pray to the God of Israel. You have always heard the story about the Jewish Jesus who was from Bethlehem in Israel. So this is not founded that South Africa hates Israel. The ANC hates Israel, not South Africans. Bafana, let's park it there. We're going to take a quick ad break. I want us to continue, rather conclude the conversation after the ad break. We're going to bring in uh, Romy Malamud. Uh, we have seemed to be struggling with uh, um, uh, finding her there, but we will definitely uh, get her in the next uh, segment. Do stay with us. We're coming back after this.
Welcome back. You're still watching Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We have reached the last segment of the show and we're still in conversation with Bafana Mudise, who is the spokesperson for the South African Friends of Israel organization, as well as Romy Malamud, whose an adoptive family has been trapped and badly affected by the conflict that is happening between Israel and Hamas. They're both uh, joining us uh, here in the studio. Uh, uh, let me just uh, start with uh, Romy. Romy, I mean, uh, the ANC has taken a position, uh, I, I believe you've seen it, that they are for Israel. I mean, when, uh, you know, that came out, uh, how, how did you feel about it? Well, the position that the ANC took was uh, actually very much against Israel. I know that the Minister of International Relations, Naledi Pando, the day after this massacre that happened to 1,400 innocent civilians in Israel who were brutally murdered and raped, people, Hamas Nazis who killed babies and murdered children. She came, she called the Hamas leadership. She said, you have South Africa's unwavering support. Congratulations for the execution of this mass terror attack. Instead of asking Hamas about the two South Africans who were murdered in this attack, as well as one who is believed to have been taken hostage, she seems to have forgotten about them. This is not surprising from a government that has abandoned its people overseas and it's abandoning its people here in South Africa. Mm. Um, Bafana, I mean, what is your hopes? You know, what are your hopes uh, for the country in terms of resolutions to this conflict? In terms of South Africa playing a role? Yeah. I, I think that our role should be not the one that, you have t that, that the ANC has taken. We should be rather looking to how do we engage with Benjamin Netanyahu, how do we engage with Mahmoud Abbas, and also the Arab world, because this issue is bigger than just Palestine and Gaza. This is beyond them. We need to engage also as well the Arab leaders across the region to say, how do we come up with a peace deal? Israelis have come up with peace deal in 1993, and before even 1993, even in 1997, even in 2000, uh, 2008. Ehumut uh, Elmet said, I will give you Gaza, I will give you the West Bank, and I will have you have East Jerusalem as a capital. The Palestinians said no. So there is always a problem here with leadership that is obsessed with declaring that Israel must not exist, Jews must go back to Europe, they are called imperial, colonized, whatever, and that ideology is wrong and it's only fueling the fire. South Africa must be a unifier. South Africa must actually start engaging both parties and their friends in the Middle East and say, how do we ensure, ensure that Palestinians and Israelis live side by side within the two-state solution? But I don't think that Israel right now should be pushed into a corner as we speak because the, mid, uh, the coverage of this war has been more about Israel attacking. But we forget that on the 7th of October, it was Hamas that attacked Israelis unprovoked. 1,400 people have died, babies were burnt alive, some were raped, some are held hostage in Gaza. This is a terrorist act. It has nothing to do with uh, freedom fighters. Mandela, Tambo, you can name them all. They, have, they will never condone such uh, acts of barbarism. So we need to start telling the ANC to say, you are taking this as the ANC and not as a government. It's appalling that a whole minister will call a terrorist organization. What does South Africa have in common with a terrorist organization? We, she could have called Netanyahu, or she could have called Mahmoud Abbas government to government. Hamas is not a government, they're a terrorist organization, killing Israelis and killing Palestinians. And that must be cleared out. ANC, their position is ideological. As an ANC position, it remains in the Tule House. South Africans, we are peace-loving, we want to unite these people and hopefully, ultimately, there will be peace in the Middle East, in Israel. I understand what you're saying, Bafana, saying that, um, you know, it's an ANC resolution, it stays in Lutuli House. Yes. But literally all the ministers were there. Uh, you know, we don't, it's only one minister that we have in the country that is not an ANC member. Yes. But all of them were there uh, saying that they, I mean, waving the Palestinian flags and stuff. Mm -hmm. Obviously... In, in terms of how, you know, democracy is structured in this country, all of them, they represent all the South Africans. So somewhere, somehow, you know, uh, obviously doesn't sit well with you guys. 
No, uh, let's, be, let's be honest here. This is an ideological position, right? The same way they want to close down the embassy of Israel. But the same people were non-aligned when he came to Russia in Ukraine. Mm. The same very people escorted al-Bashir here, who was killing their own black brothers in Sudan, was escorted here freely to run home. Meanwhile, they could have arrested them. We can't be taking moral lessons from the ANC, the same party that has literally abandoned its own people in this country. So, as I'm saying that, it's an ANC position and ministers are deployees of the ANC. And whether it was five of them or ten of them, it's a party position. Uh, when it comes to one minister who's not a member of the ANC, maybe she was towing the line, as they always say. But um, we need to make sure that we separate South Africa and ANC. Um, well, 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 actually, I wanted to come back to that, but let me bring in Romy because we are running uh, out of time. Romy, um, what would be your hopes, you know, uh, in terms of parting words, particularly uh, as your family is still trapped there? Uh, what would you like uh, to see happening? Uh, because obviously, you know, you said that um, the South Africa also seems to have abandoned its own people that side. But from you on a personal level, what would you like s seeing happening as this uh, war rages on? Of course, I would love to see an end to the conflict and peace to everyone. And I'd like to share a, just a short story to really encapsulate the feelings of my, my own feelings and many other Israelis. And I'd like to tell you the story of the Kotz family. They lived in a village in Kfaraza, also a few kilometers from the Gaza border. Two parents and three children. Every year, they had a tradition. They would go down to the border and wave kites in the air to show the citizens of Gaza, the Palestinians, that we are also people and that we will always believe in peace, even though this war has been raging on for 75 years. That family was found riddled with bullets in their bomb shelter on October 7th. All of them killed. The court's family has died, but their message for peace has not, and it will live on. And eventually, I hope to see South Africa at least help broker peace instead of just inciting hatred and violence and bloodshed. Mm. Romy, thanks very much, Bafana. Let me thank you. Unfortunately, we ran out of time. I would like to thank both of you for sharing um, uh, your story, Romy, and also just your presence this evening uh, as uh, you're still fighting for your family, you know, to be safe where they are. Bafana, thanks very much for taking the time. I hope that uh, we will have you soon on this show. Much appreciated for coming this evening. Thank you. That was, uh, Bafana, Thank you so much for me. That was Bafana Mudise, who is the spokesperson for the South African Friends of Israel uh, and, uh, you know, a Christian initiative aimed at uh, forging a friendship and support for Israel in South Africa, as well as Romy Malamud, a South African Israeli whose adoptive Israeli family has been trapped and badly affected by the conflict that is happening between Israel and Hamas. Talking to us about the impact the war has had on her family. We hope that, uh, uh, you know, or this war will definitely come to an end because ultimately civilians are casualties at the end of the day. Well, that's how we wrap it up for today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about this episode. Send us a WhatsApp or, an, a, you know, a call at 081-531-8857 or email us at Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.city. Bahai Suri Dirile Holikani from myself, Tabo Mulukwani, and the rest of the team, Mas Chabakobola is up next with your primetime news. Good night and thank you for watching.